Hi, I'm Kelly Forshaw here with Red Touch Media at the Picture House in Fact, Liverpool. I'm about to speak to director Brian Percival about his new film, The Book Thief. You've been making films for a long time. Um, you've been working on a number of different things like Downton Abbey. Um, how does working on something like Downton compare to working on such a, a big budget film like The Book Thief? Uh, I think really, you know, as a director, it, you still do the same sort of things. You know, you still visualise it, you still cast it, you still work with actors, you still tell the story that you want to tell. I think the big difference really for working, you know, for a big studio like 20th Century Fox is you just get more time to do things. And, you know, um, we're, we're, whereas on, on something like Downton, you know, there's so many actors in each scene. That means normally a lot more photography, a lot more shots to do in each scene. So generally it has to be more, you have to work more quickly. Yeah. And sort of with the book thief, you know, we'd have, we'd probably have, we'd do half as many pages in a day as we would do on Downton. Yeah. And also because there wasn't so many actors, there wasn't so many shots. And it just allows you, I think, or allows the director to, to just get it that much better. I think that's that's the, yeah. that's the aim. You know, with Downton, you have to know exactly what you're doing before you go in, and, you, you, and that's what you shoot. Yeah. And so it's all down to planning. And whilst you plan on a feature film, um, you do have the time and the space to go. You know, if we if we did this in a different way slightly, it could yeah. be even better. And I think there's the time to do that on a feature film. That's the difference. Yeah. I always think like when you get like where does the process start for a director? If you know like. Obviously, the book thief. It was a book, first of all, so you have that history of it. Um, but where for you did that? Where did it start? Like the process of well, I getting the film. Made? I didn't. Um, I didn't actually read the book before I read the script. You know, I was I was shooting Downton. I was in the middle of a Downton shoot, yeah. and the script came over from America, and and I read it, and, and I was just so blown away by it. I thought, I've got to make this film. I remember sending emails off at two in the morning, yeah. saying, you know, I really want to make this. And then I, it was only a day or two later, you know, a really good friend of mine, he said, but that's been my favourite book for years. So I got the book and I yeah, read that. Yeah. And so really it's, it all starts with the connection with the material. You know, it was yeah. me reading that script that night in a little, a little pub in the middle of nowhere that I was staying in and, yeah. and, and reading a story about, you know, a very dark time in history, but a great story about human spirit. And it touched me. So yeah. you just think, I really want to make this, you know. Yeah. And so that's where it starts. And then from then on, it becomes the process of casting and locations and all those sort of things yeah. and that's when you mould the film into the, the film that you want to make. Yeah. Yeah. The script um, was actually written about six or seven years ago or eight years ago now actually and the producer Karen Rosenfeld read about this book in the New York Times. She was actually sitting in a Starbucks in New York and yeah. somebody left a newspaper. She picked up the newspaper and read this story about a little girl growing up in Germany and it was narrated by death. Yeah. So she got the manuscript and she was so taken by the manuscript that she approached uh, 20th Century Fox and they yeah. said, it's great, we love it, and we will make it, but the time's got to be right. right. And it took, you know, seven years from yeah. her reading that manuscript to yeah. actually employing me to make the film. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's a long, long process. And yeah. I was fortunate in this one, I, I came in relatively towards the end of the thing. You know, I was just, it's a very much as a lot of the film industry is, it's about right time, right place sort of thing. Yeah. And I was just fortunate that they sent it to me and, and it was a time that it just, you know, it struck a chord with me. Yeah. Another question I want to ask you is like, you've obviously been making films for a long time and over that time, technology has changed so much. Yeah. Um, how's that been for you as a director and where do you see that um, going into the future? Like, where, How do you predict to that um, having an impact on on feel as it already has in a way. Well, I, um, it, it's there's so many different way, ways and levels you could sort of answer the question. If you like, you know, I just know that I, you know, I shot on film. I used to shoot commercials, and that was all 35 mil. Yeah. Some English television drama was all 16 mil, and I hung on to film for as long as I could, yeah. uh, because I just loved film. You know, I just that was what I grew up with, and that was what I just loved this idea of. You know, a negative, yeah, holding yeah. the negative and looking at prints. And then it got to the stage a few years ago, really, when a, a camera came out called the Alexa. And there was a few HD cameras around. And all of a sudden, there really wasn't a difference anymore. The Alexa was creating images, which I'm sure the purists will always sort of disagree. But the images were as good as 35. Yeah. And so there came a point then where you went, well, actually, you know, why can we justify going back to film? And so now, you know, what happens is uh, 
at the end of every day, instead of going to a cinema to watch rushes yeah. in a cinema, I get given an iPad with all that uh, yeah. previous day's rushes on, and I watch all my rushes, you know, when I get back that night, and they're all there on the iPad, and I can flick yeah. through them and go over and over again, different bits, and, and it might alter the way I shoot the following day. And also, you know, we used to we used to spend so much time in a cutting room, yeah. and now um, I can I'll be with the editor, and we'll spend the morning working together, and, and I'll brief him, and he'll cut what what he thinks after you know after we've had those discussions he'll yeah. recut a scene and then I can go home and it can be there on my laptop when I get home so it. then I can review it then and then give yeah. more notes and so on and so forth so yeah. it's you know this it's made the process quicker mm-hmm. um, and it's 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 made everything much more accessible yeah. and I don't think you know I don't think the image quality I don't think that's suffered no. I think whether or not that speed would would make the product suffer at the end, you know, the the film, because things have got quicker. I don't know. I I, I think, really, the way things have moved forward, um, it's it's been welcomed, you know, and it does does make our lives easier, and hopefully it does create, certainly in, in many ways, a better film at the end of it. I I agree with you, and I also think as a, like, a consumer who's watching the films that, you know, people like yourself are making, I think going to the pictures People always say, oh yeah, but now everyone's got iPads, just watch it on the internet, whatever. I don't think that experience will ever go away. No, it's a shared experience, isn't it? Yeah. You know, there's that thing. When I was growing up, that a lot of that shared experience used to come from television because there was only three or four channels. So yeah. you'd be on the bus to work or to school the next day and you'd all be talking about but what you've seen last night, whether it was yeah. not the nine o'clock news or whatever it was yeah. there. But, you know, now there's so many channels, you don't get that sort of shared experience. The only way you get that, I think, is sitting, sitting in a cinema. In a cinema yeah. And you will, you know, I want to, I'm dying to do it with this film. I've, I've, not, I've not done it with this one yet. Yeah. Um, but is to go to a cinema that nobody knows you're the director, you've got nothing to do with it, and just sit secretly yeah. at the back somewhere and just see how it, it if it yeah. does affect people or they hate it or they love it or whatever. Yeah. But you know, you really get a sense of how an audience reacts because it's a, a, group. a group of people yeah. and not somebody, you know, sitting on a, an iPhone yeah. or whatever yeah. on a bus or yeah. whatever. It's like when I, especially I always find with a comedy as well, if you're watching a comedy, I love to be in a, like a packed cinema. I just, lo- I just love it. You'll find your laughter so yeah. infectious, you'll find yourself laughing along with things yeah. that you wouldn't if you were on your own. If you're on your own, you're like so. nervous, like a yeah. bit, you don't laugh, do you? Yeah. But, uh, well, congratulations anyway. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this evening. So well, thanks. Nice to meet you. Again. And you. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. <laughs>